Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 37. Hey, if you want to download this PDF or the Excel files that go along with this video, click on the link below the video. Hey, Chapter 6, Continuous Probability Distributions. We want to remind ourselves where we came from. Chapter 5, we did discrete random variable and discrete probability distributions. Now we're going to move on to continuous. Now let's remind ourselves of discrete random variables. Remember, there were gaps between numbers. 1, 2, 3, we were mostly counting. Discrete random variables can only assume clearly separated values, usually from counting successes. We did things like count the number of banquet rooms used, number of customers arriving at Dick's Hamburgers, number of times a plane was late, cards pulled from a deck. Now, continuous random variables. Hey, there's no gaps between numbers. For any two numbers, we could have as many possible values between there. It depends on the measuring instrument. The continuous random variable can assume any value in an interval or collection of intervals. It depends on the measuring instrument. Examples, weight of ketchup bottle, salary earned. Now remember, dollars seem like discrete, but they're really not, because we could chop it up into partial pennies as fine as we would like. Gas prices scores on test. Now, each one of the discrete and continuous random variables share the definition of a probability distribution. Hey, that's a description or presentation of how the probabilities are distributed across the values of the random variable. Last chapter it was discrete random variable. This chapter it's continuous. Now, we want to really strongly differentiate between how we did things last chapter with discrete probability distribution and how we're going to do it with continuous, because there's a huge difference. Now, last chapter, we talked about binomial, Poisson, and hypergeometric. For example, the binomial distribution looked like this. The height of the columns were both the height of the column and the probability. That height represented the probabilities. And as such, we were allowed to say, hey, what's the probability of exactly one plane late and six tries? It was 0.35. That came from the height of this. We were also allowed to ask, hey, what's the probability that random variable x counting late planes and six tries was between 1 and 3? We simply added the height of the columns or the probabilities to get our total probability. So guess what? Last chapter, we could calculate the probability for exactly an x or between 2x. Now, chapter 6, continuous probability distributions, we're going to talk about the famous normal or bell-shaped distribution, uniform and exponential distribution. The normal curve will not have columns. It'll be a plotted curve where it's area under the curve that determines our probability. And guess what? We're not allowed to calculate an exact x. This distribution we'll look at, this is salary for accounting positions in Seattle area. The average or mean for the population is 53,000. And then we'll talk in terms of x's and z's, which are standard deviations. So if we want to calculate the probability of exactly $50,000 job, we can't do it. Now, the reason comes from the fact that a line or an exact point has no area. So this particular model is not going to allow us to calculate an exact probability. All we're stuck with is between. So if I say, hey, random variable x, that salary of accounting positions in Seattle, what's the probability of getting a job between 50,000 and 60,000? Well, we can go ahead and calculate the area under the curve using integral calculus or our Excel functions, and the probability will be 0.67. All of this area is probability. The whole area from negative infinity to positive infinity is 1. But the area that we will be calculating is always between. So guess what? Questions last chapter, we could actually ask the probability of exactly an x or probability between two x values. Here, questions you can ask, there it is, just one. 
probability between two x values. Now let's scroll to our next page and talk a little bit more about why that's true. Here's for our discrete, here's for our continuous. We're going to look at two examples, the binomial probability function and for our normal curve, the normal probability density function. Now, whereas this binomial function told us the height of the column, it also calculated the probability of an exact x value. This will not do that. It will, however, calculate the height of the plotted curve when we chart it but it will not calculate the probability of an exact x. Both binomial and the normal distributions can calculate between two x values. Again, for the binomial, we just simply added them and got between two x's. Over here, we're going to have to do integral calculus, or we can use one of a few functions. We're going to see the norm.dist. We will give it the lower and upper values, and it will calculate the probability for us. Do the heavy lifting and do our integral calculus. And we'll talk more about this uh, two videos ahead. But I want to emphasize here for our continuous probability distribution functions for all three, normal, uniform, and exponential. Area will equal probability. All area will equal 1. We're not allowed to calculate an exact x. And the reason why is because if we plot this right here in exact x, it's a line. And the area for that line is 0. So we can actually try, but it's 0. Not only that, but if we use greater than or equal to, so this is x greater than or equal to 50,000, that's going to be equal to x greater than 50,000 because the line has no area. Now let's look at three examples of what we're going to be allowed to do, one for each one of our distributions. For our normal or bell-shaped distribution, we're allowed to ask a question like, hey, what's the probability we could get an accounting job in Seattle area between 50,000 and 60,000? The answer will come from the area under the curve, 67%. Another example, and this is for our uniform distribution where we're going to be dealing with a rectangle. We're allowed to ask a question like, what is the probability that we will wait on hold on the phone for customer service help between 15 and 20 minutes? The answer will come from area determined by a width and height calculation. We'll find out that the probability is 0.25. And finally, for our exponential distribution, we're allowed to ask a question like, what is the probability that you will have to wait less than 15 minutes in a Disneyland line? The area or probability will come from the area under the curve. The answer will be 0.49%. All right, so we get the idea. It's always going to be between two x values, and it's going to be area, which is probability. Now, an important note about chapter 6. In chapter 6, we'll be dealing with population data that make up the distribution. So mu and sigma, mean of the population, standard deviation of the population. Later, after we learn the central limit theorem, then we'll talk about x bar, that's the mean of the sample, and s, that's the standard deviation of the sample. All right, um, next video we're going to start by talking about the uniform distribution. Then we'll move on to the normal and exponential. All right, see you next video.